Good morning, and here we are. So excited to have you all um, on today's weekly Wednesday webinar, our WWW series that we've been launching. And I'm super psyched because I have one of my favorite people in all of that is with me today, Miss Stephanie Daniels. Hey, Steph. Good morning, T. How are you? I'm great. You can't see my face. You see all these other beautiful faces, but it, it makes me <laughs> even happier. Everyone knows what I look like. So it's great to have a lot of really uh, amazing faces on today. And we're talking about some important topics, Steph, talking about joining the state associations and having some real conversations about COVID-19, what that has looked like within the associations over the past um, eight weeks, nine weeks that people have been quarantined. I don't even know what the count is these days, but it's it's been it's been an important topic, and so I'm excited that we can dig into this today. Absolutely, we are very fortunate to be um, with some of the elite of the roofing industry, and certainly some of the largest roofing organizations in the country that have joined us this morning to have this conversation. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, good morning to our Asphalt Life audience and our Atlas community. Thank you guys so much. I see lots of people coming in and lots more in the queue. So um, put something in the chat and say good morning. Um, as you all know, who typically come to our webinars, you can hear us, um, but you, you cannot say anything. But the way that we communicate primarily is through chat. So um, put something in the chat. Let us know that you can hear us okay. Say good morning. I see already uh, Francisco Romero from Chattanooga. Good morning. Hey, Ryan Knipple, Robert Howell. Good morning, Heather. Hey, Brad. Um, Brad says he's ready to roof it right. I love it. Hey, good morning, <laughs> hey, um, Adam Stanley, Dell Newport, Lauren Carlson. Good morning. Excited to hear the discussion. I am too. We got some of the leaders from across the country gathered to talk about real issues that are facing um, our community and our roofing uh, industry as a whole. And so we're excited as well, Lauren. Thanks for putting that in the chat. Paul Mullen said, we sound great. So yeah, awesome. Glad to hear that. Today, um, Stephanie, um, I know that you're gonna be introducing our panelists here in a moment, but um, um, I wanted to, to talk just briefly about uh, Atlas events that we have coming up. Atlas is continuing to um, drive the, the nail with um, making sure that all of our roofing contractors are equipped with resources like this. So if it's your first time joining us on a Wednesday weekly webinar, welcome. And thanks for joining. We'd love for you to consider um, hanging out with us once a week. We have lots of events coming up every week. We host the Atlas Pro Talks on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays with Stanley Bastek, and he talks to contractors on contractor topics. And then we have these Wednesday weekly webinars. These come every single week. Um, we're highlighting a new um, partnership or um, resource that we feel like is important for our roofing community. And so jump in here if you're on Facebook or if you're joining us um, via our live um, webinar, streaming webinar, feel free to jump in here, ask questions, let us know how we can serve you. Hey, Scott Karras, Nick Rolston, Kevin Hall, good morning. Thanks for being here. Renee, good morning to all of you all. So glad you all are jumping in. And so I don't want to keep talking. I want to get you guys to talk um, that are on this webinar. So Steph, I'll turn it over to you to introduce our exciting panel for today. Very, very good. So we have an enormous amount of the country represented today. We have Jim Miller, who is the vice president of the Virginia Association of Roofing Professionals with us. Say hi, Jim. Hello. Thanks we have, for me. yeah, we have Carla Sims, who's the executive director of the Carolina Roofing and Sheet Metal Contractors Association, representing North and South Carolina. Good morning. Good morning. We have Larry Brown, who is the president of RCAT, representing the great state of Texas. Welcome, Larry. Good morning. Good morning. We have Bill McHugh, the executive director of the CRCA, representing the great city of Chicago. We lost you on video, Bill, but I know you're still there. Good morning. Yeah, I am. A little slow internet connection. Sorry about that. And uh, no. we 
beautiful state of Illinois in addition to Chicago. So thank you. Oh, super. Thank you. And then we have Brian Swope, the current president of the FRSA, the Florida Roofing and Sheet Metal Association. Very happy to have you as well, Brian. Good morning. Good morning. So anybody who's talked to me for very long or seen one of my presentations knows that I am passionate about our professional trade organizations. I think that everybody should be a member. I think if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, you know what your grandma used to tell you? And that working to make things better, representing, um, working on the political issues that impact our industry, this is what these associations work tirelessly on with volunteers every day. And it's what we need, right? So we're going to go over some of the things that you guys have done specifically um, as it relates to COVID-19, uh, the state of the roofing uh, industry and associations in your state, um, why you should become a member, what specific services and things your organization offers to your members, um, and then some of the impacts that we've had from COVID-19 are that you guys have had to either cancel or reschedule events, so making sure that our, our people are aware of all of that. And then a wrap up on what we can all do to make things better, right? The industry, the country, the economy, everything that we've got going on, what can we all do to make it better? All right, Ms. T, let's switch, switch slides and get moving. All right. <clears throat> so specifically, um, Larry, you're in the center of my screen, so I'm gonna start with you. Uh -oh. What I know, right? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what has the Texas Association done to help inform and aid their contractors through the COVID-19 shutdowns? We have uh, our website called rooftex.com and uh, our contractors, actually any roofer that wants to learn anything can go there. We've got all the information there that the state requires and we pretty much have it broken down by counties, what each county is going to do, like we discussed earlier. Uh, each county is different in Texas. It's so big that you know, you can't really keep up. So we've got all the information on our website as far as guidelines for the, you know, the COVID stuff and regulations. Uh, pretty easy to navigate through. That's an awesome resource because different counties and cities are behaving differently. So having that broken down by county is an amazing way for the guys to check themselves before they do something that might not be appropriate, right? Right, right, exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. Um, in the, have, do you guys, I know that the NRCA has a great legal site as far as helping people with the payroll tax implications and the SBA loans and things of that nature. Um, did you guys put up any data on that for what Texas is specifically doing? Many of our local associations have had uh, law firms come in and do webinars to mm -hmm. kind of walk people through the process and hopefully make it easier for them to, to go through the process of, you know, obtaining the funds and getting in line to obtain the funds. Absolutely. Ryan, what about Florida? What, what have you guys put out that, that uh, is helpful for our Florida contractors? Uh, the main thing we've been doing is kind of stretched out over time. Um, and not just recently is we've, we've reached out to the governor's office, um, to the departments uh, of, Emergency Management, uh, Department of Business Professional Regulation. Um, our, our main thing is, is to make, make sure that people year round are uh, prepared for hurricanes uh, yes. with, with, with their homes and their business. Um, mm -hmm. Through our efforts and you know, through the association's efforts, we've been able to uh, basically keep roofing and other construction uh, as an essential business. So nothing, I mean, as far as work is concerned, uh, there's obviously been changes that have been made um, and how it gets done, but uh, we, we weren't stuck in the same situation that a lot of other trades are uh, where they were not allowed to work. Um, another thing that we did was uh, FRSA staff has put together member alerts just about every day. I mean, I know, Stephanie, you get them. I do. Um, but uh, it's basically a, a daily update as far as uh, where the shutdowns are, what counties are, are issuing the stay in place or shelter in place, depending on where you're at in the terminology. Um, who's opening back up? Um, resource uh, database resources for, for, for our, our contract members. 
That's awesome. Information is power and making sure, I, I quite frankly don't necessarily understand how some of our contractors are operating without being a member of the association, without having access to the data, either from the NRCA or from the state association or both as that's more localized. Uh, that they're operating without that safety net of, of having somebody advocating and providing that data for them. Jim, tell us about Virginia. I mean, Virginia has been so hard impacted uh, as a lot of the Northeastern states have. Um, tell us what's going on up there and what you guys have done. Well, we've kind of broke it down into three different things that we've been trying to pursue is, uh, of course, education uh, about COVID-19. We have a resource page on our website also, which is, uh, baroofingprofessionals.org um, and we had a, uh, a webinar with uh, VARP's general counsel. Um, they did the uh, information about COVID-19 and legal issues as far as uh, contract law, um, employment tax, cybersecurity. Um, we try to keep members aware of like free industry webinars such as this one um, and then we do advocacy. So Late last year, after the November elections, we joined the Coalition for a Strong Virginia Economy, which is a group of 30 trade organizations here in Virginia. And we formed after the, uh, basically all of Virginia went blue. Um, and we all kind of got together and, and promoted the, uh, the idea about delaying implementation of uh, minimum wage increases uh, financial impacts of coronavirus and we're, now we're working on a campaign to try to minimize the legal liability for uh, frivolous lawsuits against employers related to COVID-19. Um, we've also done some workforce development. We used to basically do uh, seminars and, and information uh, for high schoolers to tell them about you know what kind of a, a good job it is to be in roofing and we had to cancel the events after COVID-19 came out so uh, we did have a virtual career fair last week and some of our larger contractors were there and, and that was pretty successful and we've got a lot of possibilities that we're working on for you know when everything opens back up. That's wonderful. Now your your reopening for Northern Virginia has been delayed by the governor for another two weeks. Is that correct? At least. Yeah. So, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> I totally understand. So no haircuts for Northern Virginia, but you can still roof, right? Because you're an essential we, business. We can. Uh, it's just we're an essential business, but uh, you know everybody feels better with the uh, the legal paperwork in the car saying that. Absolutely. Very critical point. Yeah. Very important. Bill, tell us about Chicago and the state of Illinois. What are, You guys have also been severely impacted by the virus numbers. So where are you guys at in your stay at home slash shutdown and what has the organization done to help your contractors up there? Yeah, thanks for uh, inviting me on to the call. Really appreciate it. Uh, you know, visiting uh, the Chicago Roofing Contractors Association website, crca.org, uh, there's a button that says COVID-19. Uh, we've been posting a lot from some key resources. Uh, you know, Trent Cotney from Cotney Construction Law has been doing things. We post his stuff. Uh, Stephen Phillips and Philip Siegel from Hendrick Phillips uh, uh, Law Firm down in Atlanta. They, they've been doing a, a great job of posting stuff. So rather than invent brand new CDC, uh, you know, guidelines and stuff. We usually use theirs and then refer to the CDC and OSHA uh, as far as that goes. Uh, we also, uh, in Illinois, as far as opening up goes, you know, we've got a phased program going on because Illinois stretches north to south, you know, like uh, almost 400 miles. Um, you know, we've got this big major city, Chicago, sitting out on the lakefront with millions of people, that's going to be the last to open up, obviously. The governor's issued guidelines based on numbers, you know, uh, new tests at 20% uh, uh, or below for the last couple of weeks, stable hospitals, um, you know, 14% of the beds available. I mean, there were some numbers laid out that move from moving from phase two to phase three. Phase three is offices, barbers, and safety or you know, other right. things can open safely, but 
you know, we're, Chicago area is not going to be open for a bit. It's going to be on, based on the numbers. We have no idea what's going to happen with spiking and such. So, you know, it's going to be kind of crazy. Uh, some of our Colorado counties around the big city have uh, been screaming and yelling, saying we're ready, but because uh, we're locked in with Chicago, we can't go anywhere. From sure. an association perspective, the state of Illinois, Illinois Workers' Compensation Commission, issued a rule about three weeks ago uh, that said that uh, if an employee became ill with the COVID, it was presumptively assumed it happened on the job site or the work oh, site. Wow. Uh, we as an association uh, uh, donated money to a coalition, uh, got our lobbyists involved, um, organized with the general contractors, the manufacturers, the retail merchants, and got it uh, turned around within a week. So that ate wow. up a whole bunch of our time. Uh, yeah, you know, but what an important issue. Yet. Crazy, yeah. Nothing's over yet on that. It still has to, uh, you know, we got the rule knocked down, but legislator, if legislation comes back, it, it could cause some issues there. So the association, what's it been doing? Working like crazy to, to protect the workforce, uh, get information out about uh, safe work, listen to our contractor <laughs> member base to, you know, what they're doing as far as uh, best practices. We've had uh, three webinars, uh, one from Cotney, one from Philip, another one from uh, uh, Safety Check, our safety consultant, in addition to the other webinars we've done Thursdays with CRCA, like you're doing Wednesdays, we're doing Thursdays. We've right. done six of those with uh, three of the webinars, completely new uh, educational material that uh, we've written with our committees. That's wonderful. You know, a lot of people aren't terribly familiar with the amount of political work that the associations involve themselves in, uh, whether it's workman's comp issues or whether it is um, insurance burdens that are brought to bear on the industry. You guys are very vital in fighting that at the state level so that your contractors can do good business, right? Some of these legislative issues, like the one that Bill just brought up, I had no idea that that was even a thing. If I understand the issue, that would make all COVID-19 cases move to workman's comp insurance and be a liability to the company. That's, uh, that's yeah. That that was the uh, that that was the uh, issue. Uh, we contacted, we activated several committees, industry affairs, which got involved politically with our lobbyists, contracts and insurance. So we have many insurance broker members and insurance company members. It was quite the uh, the issue, to say the least. The insurance companies basically said they would not write insurance in the state if this kept on going. Wow. Uh, that we would have, our contractors would have had to go <laughs> to the state of Illinois for their insurance, kind of a last ditch uh, effort, really causing some big issues as well. Great team, a lot of people activated in our association. It's unbelievable to see the volunteer time that uh, the uh, uh, CRCA members put in. Um, it just just an amazing effort to get it, it turned back over. So there was a lot going on uh, from, from our end of it. Uh, we tried to focus on the uh, the, the local issues. NRCA uh, and Reed Ribble did a fabulous job of uh, preparing roofing contractors for the PPP program and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he was doing Facebook Live stuff, he was doing videos, YouTube, everything else. So rather than duplicate that work, we stayed heavily on our stuff locally. And there's enough state by state to keep you busy, I'm sure, right? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> For sure. Carla, talk to us about North and South Carolina. It's, um, I know that you guys have hosted some webinars and done and put information out. Tell us, tell us about your state association and what's going on up there. Well, in the Carolinas, we are definitely keeping our website up to date, just like everyone else. Um, we are trying not to recreate anything that isn't necessary. Um, but most importantly, we're definitely sharing all of the uh, webinar information that our legal resource has developed for us. Um, they did quite a bit, uh, pretty, uh, for about six weeks, every Tuesday, they had something that was related to, obviously, the COVID and how it was impacting the Carolina uh, workers and, and legal documents, contracts, things of that nature. So definitely promoting that and using our magazine resource as well to promote information. Um, 
And our self-insurance fund uh, is managed by a third party, and all of the information that they would ever share regarding OSHA regulations related to the COVID, we definitely shared that information up front. Uh, we have a weekly newsletter that we've been sharing uh, updated information, whether it was on the resource, the webinars, um, especially with the with the downturn um, of being able to provide training opportunities. We even though it's not COVID necessarily related, uh, there's still webinar training opportunities for these guys to be able to plug in on during their downtime. Um, if they're stuck at home, if they have to delay a job for whatever reason. Um, so we're just definitely leaning on all of the resources and promoting the information that is received um, to the association office and being able to give that out to our members and, and peers because we have a lot of non-members that are um, affiliated with us that um, they need the information just as much. Absolutely. And that is a major consideration, making sure that you guys are the resource for what the state is doing, what your local economy, what the demands are, so that you can help your contractors navigate through it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I have been fortunate, I've gotten to log into several of your webinars that each of the associations has hosted, just so I can be cognizant. I'll never be an expert on all those legal issues, but at least I have a base understanding of what each state is needing and, and things of that nature, right? And thank goodness I'll never be an expert. That would be <laughs> much better at roofing. So, all right. So the next set of questions that we had, Tiara. Um, so just as we're on a web conference today, and I have, I have more web conferences, Zoom meetings, and conference calls in any given week since this has started than I have ever had in the history of my career. Um, <laughs> And I'm not sure that that's going to change necessarily overnight. I think their, um, you know, impact on the manufacturing side, there are probably times when we jumped on an airplane to have a meeting that we probably could have knocked out in a Zoom conference more effectively. Um, and there may be some of that that carries through. I have talked about it. I think that my travel schedule in general will probably be reduced by a certain percentage that we'll handle just like this. It feels like I'm talking to each one of you in your living room, right? So we, we can have a face-to-face, -face, I can judge your body language, we can have a real conversation this way. So what, what changes to the industry do you guys see moving forward? Um, whether it's virtual tools, technology tools, safety issues on the job site that the pandemic has made us look at or you know, maybe has hastened their impact on the industry. What do you guys think? We've been using email more and, and uh, DocuSign for our documentation yes. on our contracts and estimates. Uh, and it, it's more convenient for everybody. I personally like the personal interaction. I think a lot of people do miss that, but you do have those that are still gun shy and leery of what's going on and want to be more precautious. So uh, the electronic age obviously is here and uh, I'm personally old school. Um, so it's it's a little harder for me, but uh, I think as long as we're doing what we can to make uh, you know our customers and and everyone feel safe, that's what we need to uh, strive for. I think you're right, and we bring up an important thing: DocuSign or those any of the electronic signing tools. They're very convenient to have continuity, right? You can initial, you can sign, you can send to multiple people and have a complete legal document um, without it having to have changed hands multiple times um, other than electronically. It's a great tool. Um, Brian, what do you see? I guess I should unmute that first. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, the webinar situation, uh, very new for me to participate, uh, let alone just listen along. Um, as my own little technical issues here let you know um i i'm i'm, I'm with you larry I, I personally like delivering my proposals to my customers i like the interaction um it, it it's uh, it's just a, a handshake type deal that we, we you know we're kind of getting away from i think unfortunately moving into you know a lot more docusign it's definitely great for efficiency um as far as getting things handled a lot quicker 
Um, but but as far as that, you know, it's just, just the, the the nature of the business is the way it's headed. Um, I, I, I do think it's going to be a lot more uh, electronic going forward. Um, nice thing, uh, other other thing that you know, as far as the you know the pandemic's help is our trucks are really clean right now. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I as far as you know, all all of them are. Um, you know, the, the, those trucks are inside are really clean. Um, mm -hmm. Job site stuff is really clean right now. Right. Um, I might not tell them if it ever slows down. I'm never going to tell them myself. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but but no, but it, it keep keeping you know just make, making sure everybody stays safe. But but, but that's but those are kind of the changes I see. Very good, Jim. What have you What have you seen? Well, uh, to what Brian was saying, I had a customer yesterday that I went to visit. He opened up the front door and reached up and shook my hand, and uh, we both kind of stopped and stared at each other. And he goes, uh, are you all right? And I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> oh, thank God. Whoever but, thought that uh, would be an awkward moment, right? Yeah, we both looked at each other and realized it at the same time. And like, oh, we're not supposed to do that. Um, but uh, we're going to keep innovating. Uh, we're going to keep using alternative methods to train and communicate with our people, um, doing virtual meetings, the shared screens, collaboration. We're going to see probably a lot more of that uh anything that can be done virtually probably will be done that way face-to-face -face meetings are going to diminish especially on the the low slope or commercial side um people like me more residential steep slope guys there you know, there's a certain amount of stuff that we just can't do that way um we're, we're going to have to use more non-traditional methods to communicate with uh customers and prospects and then we're going to have to live with more regulation. Uh, OSHA, CDC, um, the Commonwealth of Virginia, they've all got guidance and increased responsibilities, regulations for the employers and the businesses. Um, like Brian was saying, cleaning and sanitation. Uh, you've got to do social distancing, uh, up to employee health screening, where you have to ask them to fill out questionnaires. The, the longer impact is, is probably going to be more intrusion or regulations as possible. OSHA is going to expand its role, safety to healthcare, maybe not in this administration, but in future administrations probably. Um, and roofing's, you know, like I said, it's going to a certain amount of direct interactions with products and people and, and whatever we can do remotely, we will. Um, but as long as construction is essential, uh, we're, we're going to be working. I think roofing is still going to have to face a lot of the sluggish economy when this is over, because we're just starting to impact. Um, most roofing companies have had jobs in the pipeline mm -hmm. and if they allow us to work, we will, um, we've got stuff that we put off, but we continue to get some stuff in and. You know that's all great now but there's going to be a ripple effect from all this that's, that mm -hmm. may slow things down that we have to deal with i agree um the the ramifications are what of what are going to happen uh given that we're being told we're in a recession and in spite of um how well wall street is doing and in spite of the fact that we feel okay right this minute we don't know what that next shoe is going to look like, right? And that's probably yeah. a big part of concern. Uh, we hear concerns about the cash crunch that, that is potentially coming. And it's hard to understand what those impacts really will be. And I think that that's, you know, again, we, you know, we talked about it. Roofing may not be the most glamorous industry in the world, but it is a necessity. You don't buy a roof as, as something that you just woke up one morning and decided you wanted to buy. You typically do it because there's a necessity. And if if you run out of pots and pans and the water's still pouring in, you will find a way to pay for a roof in most cases, right? Right. So thank goodness for that part. A yeah. little bit of job security for everybody on this call anyway, right? <laughs> so Carla, what industry changes have you guys seen? Um, North Carolina is kind of like Texas. It's it's half very civilized with Charlotte and Raleigh and half a little wild, wild west, right? It is. South Carolina is definitely more rambunctious than North Carolina. 
Um, but for the most part, you know, our biggest change is the education opportunities and having to, to develop webinars for that. So that is something that we are looking into and looking um, ahead to possibly do because it's not something that we've usually done. Everything that we do educationally and has always been uh, at our conferences or uh, in-house at our association office to provide to our members. Um, so we're definitely having to think outside the box and start thinking about the newer technology way of getting the education out. The only downside to that right now is that North Carolina just developed the um, edu continuing education credits for them to renew their license. Um, and right now legislation is telling them that for this year, they have to get the in-person credits in order to do. So we're kind of stuck in a rock, you know, between a rock and a hard place right now, just because of the fact that until education changes that, how are we going to be able to give them that opportunity to get their education? Um, so being that we're trying to develop something out of nothing now, because we don't know if legislation is going to change it in time, but we want to hear that if they do at the last minute, that, the, uh, that these contractors can get their education credits as soon as they can, um, simply because we can't host anything in person, given that the gathering number is still at, still at the 10. Um, right. so unless we open that gate of okay, we'll only do it for less than 10 people, or do we wait until legis legislation makes a change. So we're, just, we're definitely trying to think ahead, but we're doing it slowly, not too, um, too hastily. Understood. I didn't even know that that was an issue. So mm. what a catch-22. You have to have your mm. CEUs, but you can't get them online. You must sit in a classroom, and oh, by the way, you can't sit in a classroom right now. Right. <laughs> only government, only uh, only politicians can come up with stuff that cool. I'm just saying. Typical so, bureaucracy. Right. <laughs> no doubt. Well, well in, in for North Carolina, for that North Carolina um, license, um, that affects a lot of people. You got South Carolina that comes to North Carolina. You have Virginia that comes to North Carolina. You have Georgia. Absolutely. So it's it's all over. There's no doubt. Um. We'll keep an eye on that issue, and if there's anything that we can do as a resource, just let us know, because obviously I think every manufacturer does have CEU courses, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there may be, there may be, we may be able to, to, I don't know, put something together with duct tape and bailing wire this year, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. All right. Bill, tell us about some of the impacts that you've seen um, on the on the industry as far as how we daily operate in the Illinois Chicago market? Well, the contractors are telling us that uh, life has changed. You know, many of them, as soon as this hit in uh, mid-March, stepped back a few steps, did some research, and changed how they operate. Whether it's having fewer people in the office, you know, those that have family that might have health issues, some of those people instead of going to the office guess what they're all working remotely um, right. and then also uh, implementing policies for the field workers to keep social distancing going because once a crew is together it's a team those teams go to lunch together they go to break together they go to coffee together they go you know maybe out for a refreshment after work and, you know, that stuff had to change. You know, they couldn't be more than six feet apart or, you know, couldn't be closer than six feet apart. And they couldn't be eating lunch together again. They got to be separate. They got to be careful on their, their uh, hygiene. All those kinds of things had to be implemented and implemented very quickly. Um, things that we've noticed in the Chicago area and uh, some of the uh, other regional cities in Illinois is that the vertical work is a bit more difficult to get done. When I say vertical, you know, Chicago is the birthplace of the high-rise building. You know, we've right. got uh, many skyscrapers getting up on a, an elevator on the exterior skin of the building when they can only hold a few people it means it's going to take a long time for your people to get to the roof to get the work done. Right. Uh, so, so the more horizontal work uh, was more desirable, even though productivity might wind up getting hurt by some of, or some of those contractors. So, um, you know, crew distancing, cleanliness, strategically figuring out which jobs to get on. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, things that have happened in addition to 
the type of work that gets done now. If you think about it, all the schools were pretty much shut down in mid-March. Right. So the school uh, re-roofing work in the uh, commercial institutional low slope roofing industry, those schools, uh, the consultants, uh, building owners said, get going guys, let's uh, start roofing these things now. So it's taking some of the work from that normally take place in the summer in the Northern climates and moving it to, uh, well, probably the Southern climates too, but moving it uh, backwards a bit. So right. you know, the, the contractors are telling me things are good now, uh, we're a bit concerned about fall and what's coming in 2021. From the e economics perspective, uh, the once a recession hits, the construction industry is usually 12 to 18 months following, and then the roof on that is much later. So, right. uh, you know, a lot of the funding for big buildings has already gone through. Um, there's going to be some uh, projects put on hold on the new construction, but it's a little harder to get that, uh, you know, put on hold to take place once the money's all funded and it's rocking and rolling. So there's some changes coming. There's some changes that took place already. It's kind of a new normal, like people have been saying. Very much so. Um, and that's a that's a fair evaluation. I really hadn't thought about trying to get uh, a full crew up to the top of the skyscraper and just the practicalities of that, right? You could spend all day going up and down elevators and not get anything done. Uh, um, yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, yeah. And then we've seen the advent of a lot of different virtual tools, whether it's um, using all the virtual takeoff tools that are available, whichever one that you prefer, so that there's less time in the truck and less time spent at the physical job site. Um, a lot of people doing virtual selling, uh, virtual door knocking um, through social media advertising. So we've seen what was a very, very physical let's all go jump in the truck and make six sales calls or go to six job sites today. We've seen a very physical industry turn into a very virtual industry quickly. And, and I think we need to be cognizant. My mom, when she buys a roof and she lives in the hail zone because we're from Oklahoma, so she buys a roof fairly often. Um, she wants to look at sample boards. She wants to know the guy who's nailing on her roof, right? Um, I probably fall in the middle and my kids are probably really comfortable doing everything off their phone. Right. And I think that's a generational thing that we're seeing come down the pipeline. And I think that just making sure that we all keep up to speed on the tools that are available so that we can suit all three demographics is probably the, what we have to do. Right. As mentioned earlier on the call, the residential market and the commercial markets are going to be different uh, characteristics uh, for each of those marketplaces. Uh, in the commercial industrial world, it's it's much different than the residential world, and mm -hmm. you've heard that today on the on the program. And the low slope, yes, less less issues, less job site meetings, more uh, go to webinar, Zoom. Uh, to get uh, uh, coordination meetings instead of driving to a job site and having 30 people in a room or they're doing it with uh, go to meeting with 25 or 30 and not worrying about the uh, in in person contact residential totally different that's going to be a, a you know a rougher call for that type of contractor agreed and i think that um, you guys highlighted some very important points making sure that there are hand sanitizer dispensers all over every building and workshop and website and warehouse and all of those things. We've all done that now and it's second nature. Every time we walk by one, we squirt the, the juice in our hand, right? I, it is. And then um, having a safety protocol, having your essential worker badges with you, making sure that you, you're not just teaching your roofers how to use their harness and to make sure that they're following the regular OSHA requirements, you, you've got an entire health um, body of safety protocol you have to go through with them right now. And that may never change. We may That may be a permanent chapter in the safety manual now, right? Agreed. Absolutely. And I think it's, and I think it's important too, you know, making, making sure that we have those things, no matter what the size of your business is, whether you're a two-man show or you have 2,000 employees, making sure you have that protocol if for no other reason than your business liability. Even if you believe whatever you believe about the virus and the politics and any of it in, involved, 
if for no other reason, please have it to make sure that your business liabilities and safeties are taken care of, right? That's right. For sure. All right, next question, T. So this is a general, we're not asking you to give a legal opinion, but have you guys found any fast tracks? I mean, is there any magic website you can go to to make it better? Is there, I mean, I, I hear, you know, the, the Florida unemployment system has been a complete disaster. It's, it's, it's hit epic proportions of people making fun of it. Uh, I guess it's been so bad. And so I know that there are lots of different mazes out there um, that everybody has to work their way through. Have you guys found any great resources for working on this problem at all? Small bank. Well, I'm sorry, what was that, Brian? Small bank. Small bank. I've uh, heard that. Yeah. We've been, we, we've been with, you know, we were with Bank of America when they were Nations Bank for as right. long as I can remember. Um, and my grandfather in his last couple months had taken up, you know, an account at a local bank near his house. Uh, he was in there quite a bit. And we actually went in and dealt with them because we heard stories about Bank of America. Uh, went in there, he hand walked everything through. We had everything we needed. Approved PPP loan in the bank. I think it took us a week to 10 days. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I mean, it, it was, it was, uh, I've heard horror stories. I, 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 got, I got friends in, in other parts of Florida. Uh, really good friend of mine in Jacksonville. He's been almost two months at the same time we did and he's he's not in the roofing business but he, he's um he, he, he's still waiting for bank of america um you know, a small bank small local bank that's that's the only only that's the best recommendation i can give that's awesome um and i can i concur i've actually heard any of the big national banks we won't name any names that that those processing times are much worse going through them and that if you have a local bank or credit union that you can work with, it's it's a better scenario, right? Yes. Awesome. Any other tips or tricks, guys? I can tell you that uh, don't delay any paperwork. Um, make it a priority. Make sure that it gets done. Um, make sure it's accurate. Have backup information. Keep it all together. Um, Make sure that uh, when you do get your PPP funds, keep them segregated. Mm -hmm. um, other things, document every penny in, every penny out. Um, and it's it's very critical that, that those things are followed. If, if you have a problem later down the line, you're going to really wish that you did that. That's a really good piece of advice as well. If, if you are an organized person, good for you. Stay that way. If you haven't been... <laughs> It's a good time to get that way, right? Get organized. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, we all know what it feels, you know, just the words IRS audit can put you in a panic. So I can, this is probably even much worse than that if you had to backtrack everything you did, right? It's probably yeah. incredibly important to be straight and know what you're doing. Any, any other tips or tricks on, on the legalities and the financial maze? Just a second, following the rules, make sure that, uh, you know, if you're in the PPP thing, make sure your payroll, the number of uh, workers is exactly the same and uh, dot your I's and cross your T's because the enforcement's going to come later. The rules aren't necessarily clear right now, uh, but they're still going to go after people later on, even on unclear rules. So uh, the, the comment about documentation and following the rules, totally on. Absolutely. Um, be very straightforward because you don't know what's coming next. So be ready for whatever, right? Yeah. Excellent points, guys. All right, next question, T. So what should we be doing as an industry to promote safety? We need you guys to work. We're an essential business. We need roofs to be put on because you need roofs to be put on. You can't have a building without a roof. But what can we do as an industry to promote safety? What else could we do as a manufacturer? What can you guys do as organizations to make it a, a number one priority for our guys? Anybody? Anybody? I think the most part is just uh, going back to making 
your customer and the consumers feel comfortable with the environment that we're currently in. Um, I, I think that's key. You know, you've got some people like myself that I'm kind of like Jim. I'm, I grew up old school. You, you shake somebody's hand and you judge them by the firmness of their handshake. And, oh, yeah. you know, I had a guy the other day, he went to shake my hand and we did the elbow bump and, you know, it was like, man, that just don't feel right. But you've got other people that, you know, they're going to wear their mask. They're going to look through you through the peephole. And uh, you just got to adapt to each person as to, you know, how they feel comfortable. Agreed. I think that's very important because, you know, I, I don't know that I have a lot of physical concerns for myself personally, but I, I'm terribly concerned for my mom terribly concerned for other people I know, right? So I think that's a very valid point, Larry. Anything else? I mean, we're all working on educational pieces, right? That's why we're talking today. All your associations are putting out webinars um, about all of those safety pieces. And I think it probably is, as we look at next, next year's conventions and things, re-upping what we do for OSHA because to your point Jim you brought it up earlier that that's probably going to be part of OSHA in the future I don't disagree with you it seems like something right up their alley right so yeah. we probably should wrap our arms around what that's going to look like in the future to make sure we're ready for it well we we live in a dangerous industry yes uh, it's dangerous times but collectively roofing is a safe business um, we care about what we do. We pay more attention than a lot of other businesses. Um, I know when I talk about roofing to other people, um, I'm not only talking about what we do, but we highlight what we're doing regarding safety and how regulated we are. Um, you know, we've got OSHA, we've got the EPA, we've got uh, our state uh, safety and health. And besides, you know, talking to each other about it, it would kind of be nice if the NRCA, who I know probably is somebody listening out there, uh, it'd be nice if they did like a national uh, PSA or uh, media buy and highlight roofing and from a career opportunity, as well as our commitment to safety and, and how professional the industry is. That's a really awesome thought um, because obviously the construction industry had a major labor shortage prior to the onset of the pandemic which has actually gotten worse right yep so we were all working on different uh training programs and trying to reach out to high school students and promote why roofing is a good trade to become involved in we all had programs like that going before Quite frankly, a lot of that was derailed because of the onset of the pandemic and we couldn't do what we normally did. We couldn't travel or meet in groups. So there's probably a big need to put forth tools and virtual tools, to your point, um, virtual recruiting tools for the industry because it's it's a problem today that I, I think will probably be worse by the end of the year just given where, what we're looking at, right? It's a great idea. Good thought process. Probably something that we can work on as state organizations too, right? So, yeah, having our own public service announcement reach out uh, recruiting tool that we can send to college recruiters. You know, the, the college, uh, what's that? The uh, We'll find you a job office. They all call them something different, but you know, when you graduate, right. when you get that guy. Placement that guy. people. Yeah. yeah, that guy. So, um, and same for high school students as well. Uh, I think that's a, a really good thing. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, per, uh, Bill McHugh here. Promoting safety is uh, a huge piece. As you've heard already, uh, roofing is a pretty highly regulated business. But at the same time, you also heard people say it's a dangerous sport. You know, working at height every day, uh, day in and day out, um, in the elements, whether cold or hot, uh, you know, start times varying because of the heat, because of uh, weather changes, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, th this is a really rough environment for the workforce to be in. Right. It's not easy to recruit for, e exactly. We understand that. Uh, I know the NRCA put out a, a brand new 
uh, video public service announcement, kind of a short enough to uh, to post in various places that was uh, released maybe two weeks ago, something like that. Um, I can tell you locally, the uh, the CRCA uh, works with a, a couple of organizations that do recruiting uh, as far as uh, trying to uh, find workers for the uh, the contractors. We liaison with some folks for that. But most important, most of the contractors report that their best recruiting tool is their own crews uh, who recruit through word of mouth to find right. workers that are going to uh, join the uh, crew and then stay with the crew. You know, the attrition rate is huge once people find out how hard it is to do work on a roof, whether it's steep slope or low slope. It's a right. lot of work. It's a lot yes. of work. It's hard work all the time. So safety is huge. We've got a safety consultant. Uh, that we work with our trade show. We had a uh, great speaker in January. Thankfully, our trade trade show was in January. We were able to pull it off, and hopefully, we're clear uh, for next January. But we had a, a very effective speaker for that. If you guys wanted to see who that was? Just visit crca.org and hop in the events page, go to the trade show, and you'll be able to download uh, the slides from it. It was really effective, almost a shocking story. And sometimes, you know, people. Uh, all of us included on the line need a little shocker to say, oh, oh, I better pay a little bit more attention than doing what I normally do when it comes to safety. E even office staff when walking on roofs, you know, we can all get complacent climbing ladders, getting on top of roofs, you know, I'm fine. Uh, but you know what? Not always. Uh, we do need to, to pay attention to that. And then add this new stuff, the pandemic stuff to what normally goes on, social distancing, hygiene, uh, surfaces, making sure all the surfaces are clean, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole bunch more that's going to happen in the future with uh, our contractor member businesses and also the manufacturers too. The manufacturers will have to change how they do business as well. Um, you know, many of the manufacturers have great relationships with their distributors, their manufacturers reps, their contractors, and those relationships that have been built over many years are going to help them keep moving forward, you know, like Atlas and others. Uh, Absolutely. So, big thanks for asking the question. Very, very welcome. And, you know, I think we all know people. I can think of five right off the top of my head that are roofers, construction professionals, <clears throat> who have been doing this a long time and have had accidents, right? They've been walking on roofs their whole life. They're really good at it. They almost always take all the proper safety protocols but we all know ones who have come off and crushed that heel of their foot. I just found out a couple of weeks ago a, a, a dear contractor friend of ours in Georgia who went down an unsecured elevator shaft. He will walk again, but he's in a wheelchair right now. And accidents happen, job sites are dangerous. So being cognizant and awoke and understanding what we need to do to keep everybody safe, I think those are really important points and I appreciate you bringing them forward, Bill. Yes, um, and I do love the idea. Tiara, I know you're taking notes. Let's look for that PSA that the uh, NRCA put out and see what see what it looks like. Maybe we should uh, promote recruiting as well. For sure. Absolutely. Um, all right, next slide, guys. All right, this is my favorite. This is why everybody is here. Um, so, I think everybody who is in this industry should be a member of their national and their state local trade organization. Period, end of story, no excuses, just do it, okay? I say that because each of your organizations have legal counsel on staff to help, to help members. You have safety advisors on staff to help members. You have political activists. You know, one of the things that I have observed just me looking around the big wide world, states that have strong organizations have much lower workman's comp rates. Fact, true, wow. undeniable fact. Strong state organizations advocate, mandate, protect, and do things, um, and that is a true overhead and burden that that organization is providing to every contractor in the state, just not just the members. So it's worth your membership fee, be a part of it, work towards it. 
So that's my soapbox. I, I want to hear about all of your soapboxes too. <laughs> so tell me, Brian, why should they be a member of the FRSA? They look at the volunteer for all kinds of stuff. Wait. Um, <laughs> no, it, 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 you know, my, my job is, is day to day. It, it's, I'm, I'm out there to sell roofing, make sure my guys are safe, run the day to day operations. Um, our, our state association, um, I mean, as you mentioned, the, the team, our, our le legal counsel, our legislative counsel, um, we have a self insurance fund that oh, that's a big one. Come through. Uh, we have a full time technical director um, who he, he's, you know, all, all, all the fun, all the fun stuff that, you know, you think you know, you, you know, you, you get the full, you get the full, uh, uh, you know the full story with 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 Mike. Um, True story. I, I mean, it, it's just it, the day to day stuff. It, it just it alleviates a, a ton of, of headaches for you and let you know the, the the numbers of the association do the heavy lifting for you. Um, just uh, off the you know 800 time, 800 members of FRSA. I mean, there's just that many people that are out there to you know do the heavy lifting for you. So you know, strength in numbers. Absolutely. Good, good summary. Larry, why should we all be a member of RCAT? Well, like we discussed earlier, Texas is still kind of the wild, wild state. Uh, we've been working diligently to get licensing passed in Texas, and we've been unable to do that thus far. We did get our deductible book bill passed uh, last session, which uh, you know, it's always been a law that our attorney general back in the late 90s voiced his opinion and uh, kind of created a loophole where guys would go in and, you know, basically do a roof for free to the homeowner. And it's tough to compete with a brick and mortar business against chucking a truck with his with his free roofs. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have a lobbying team. We do have uh, lawyers, you know, on our staff mm -hmm. and. Uh, they definitely know who RCAT is in Texas now. Um, we are growing, um, but you know, with Texas being a wild, wild state, it's still hard. We do, you know, do licensing through our state association, which is a obvious sales tool for our members. Uh, we do continuing education uh, through our program. We've got a portal where they can go in and and study and, and become licensed through our portal. Uh, yes. There again, changing from physical uh, meetings and, and giving classes and instruction to going online to where they can do it at their convenience, whether it be at night or during the day when they're at the office or whatever. Um, but but I'm, I'm like you, uh, when I became president of RCAT last November, October, uh, my thing was, um, we need to be a brotherhood and, and not just in Texas nationwide. I mean, um, you know, there's, I don't know about the other guys, but me personally, I consider myself a professional and in Texas, especially, you, you know, you go somewhere and you're talking to somebody and they say, what do you do? And you say, I'm a roofing contractor. Oh, you're a roofer. No, you have a misconception. I am a roofing contractor. I have insurance. I have an office. I have, estimating software. I'm a professional. I'm not the guy that has a magnet and a ladder. So right. to me, it gives you a designation as to you care enough to learn more, to be better than just the guy that became a roofer in the last storm. So right. uh, to me, to me, it's very beneficial. I think that's wonderful. And it's a very good summary. There are states that do not allow roofing as a license holder, right? It's not allowed as a specific license category. So the association has created a certification program to make sure that there are some standards. And that's wonderful right. because roofers, you literally cannot have a building without a roof. And I have seen roofers become design professionals and, and be smarter than a lot of engineers as they're solving issues on a roof. And you deserve to be as respected as any plumber, electrician, HVAC professional, or any of the other skilled trades, period. That's I it. Agree. Yes. Yeah. Carla, why should we join Chris Mac? 
Well, I definitely agree with um, Brian and Larry on uh, the education behind it, the, the legal aspects, you know, having that representation um, available as a resource. Um, but it's also about the networking and learning from each other. You know, sometimes you get in a room with um, other contractors and you're sharing your stories or sharing what you've come across in your day-to-day -day operations, and then you open up and you can actually talk about what helped you get through it, what you can offer to help that person go through it, you know, and, and give them the education that they need. So it's not always about what you're learning inside a conference room or um, behind a webinar, but it's what you're learning face-to-face -face with, with your relationships. Um, and I think also in that aspect, you know, I think that's where some of the younger generation that is coming through the working contract or businesses, visas, it's getting lost. Um, so it's letting this, that generation know that coming to these conferences and a face-to-face -face relationship is much better than sitting behind a screen, even though that's the new norm these days. Um, but when you get the opportunity to go face-to-face -face and meet meet a contractor or meet a representative of a manufacturing company, you know, have that day, have that, have that conversation um, and share your experiences because even though you're inside a bidding war sometimes, it's, that's not, that's not always where you're going to be getting to know these people. Um, so I think that's another great opportunity behind organizations is being able to just have a conversation and just have a relationship beyond that nine to five, eight to six hours. You're absolutely right. The mentoring and the sharing of best practices are wonderful. I mean, I was fortunate that early in my career, I had some really smart guys who knew a lot about all aspects of roofing and they were okay sharing that information and mm -hmm. it made me better at what I do. So being, putting yourself Go into the quarterly board meetings, go into the association gatherings, listening to the guys who do this every day who are really good at it or who run really good businesses. That's a really good thing. I totally agree. It's okay to leak a secret every once in a while. <laughs> that a true story. They they drop little golden nuggets of great information, right? Yes. <laughs> That's right. Bill, why should we join CRCA and be a part of the great state of, of Illinois roofing? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that and appreciate the opportunity to be on the call. Thank you. Um, we've Our, our uh, membership marketing committee put together a, a very quick slide, PowerPoint slide that has basically four bullet points on it. The resources that are provided by CRCA from technical assistance, code assistance, the networking at member events, member listings at the uh, crca.org. The big one being committee involvement. Uh, at our committee day every December, we get about 100 people in a room. And I'm not sure we're going to be doing that in December this year, but uh, 100 people in the room uh, talking about various uh, issues in the Illinois roofing market, uh, as well as the uh, environment in Chicago, uh, some of the tools and the networking side of things. The advocacy work, uh, we work at the city of Chicago. We work at the state of Illinois for building and energy code development. And then also we hang out at the International Code Council to help with the national issues that are going on. Uh, you know, great shout out to uh, Mark Graham and his staff from the NRCA because they do an amazing job strategizing and finding ways to make sure that uh, the whole industry gets uh, protected at the building code environment. And of course, education, whether it's safety, uh, three of the webinars we did were on uh, code type things, energy code uh, exceptions we've gotten through for the Illinois uh, Energy Conservation Code in Chicago when it comes to re-roofing and there's flashing height issues and all that kind of stuff. And of course, mm -hmm. uh, technical and legal. Our, our building envelope committee has been meeting probably once a week for the last six weeks. Our industry affairs committee has been meeting via, you know, uh, go to meeting using the uh, webcam sometimes, sometimes not, but there, there's all kinds of reasons to join. Just uh, hop on crca.org, info at crca.org, give us a holler, happy to have them join. I'll, I'll end with one, two things. One is our members tell us the relationships are one of the reasons they stay. Um, the friendships that are developed amongst okay. the association, you know, how's your family, uh, how, how's your wife, 
Um, there's so much of that goes on in the Chicagoland market uh, that's that's different than some of the other markets. And then the volunteers that say that they invest time, say they get a tenfold return on their time. It doesn't always show up, you know, right away, but uh, whether it's cumulative knowledge, like you had mentioned on the line, those willing to share that knowledge so you can grow. Personally, Absolutely. I can tell you, you know, through my years with CRCA uh, as a member first in the early 80s, uh, that a lot of my education came from my customers at CRCA, from my contractor friends, from my consultant friends, and other manufacturers. So, lots of good reasons to join all of these groups. I absolutely agreed. All right, Jim, tell us why we need to be a part of VARP. Well, VARP is uh, basically like everybody's been saying, we're we're looking at the big picture items that companies don't have time for, like legislative advocacy. Um, here we have lobby days where we go to our state capitol and we, we lobby the Congress. And it, it, when you find out who your reps are for your area and you get to know them and they get to know you, um, yes. you can't really put a price on that. You can get more action once they know who you are and, and the number of people that you're representing and you're, you're a good voice for them. Um, it's because of our location, we can also uh, do the same thing at the national level and go to DC, um, which sometimes we go in there and we park ourselves in an office to talk to somebody and, and they eventually do or at least they send somebody out to talk to us. Um, there's a lot of other things that you can get in an association that you can't get anywhere else, like um, going to a social event and having a with your biggest competitor. Um, talk, you don't talk about the the prices that you charge or the, the infighting amongst you, but you, you get camaraderie with the other people that are doing what you're, you're doing. We've got people in our organization that go to a job site and they don't have something that they need and they can actually call up a competitor that's in the association borrow what they need and replace it later so that they can get the job done true i don't know anywhere else that you can get that kind of, of camaraderie going no you're you're absolutely right it, that is a the brotherhood and sisterhood that we have at these at these groups when we all get together is awesome truly it is. Is. One of my favorite parts. It feels like a family reunion every time I go to one of my organization meetings. Right. And did I mention parties and drinking? It's always great. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there is that. Adult beverages are as much a part of roofing as asphalt is. So. Absolutely. Yes. No <laughs> doubt. Um, well, T, we probably have some questions on the line, and I know that we're right at our hour mark. So, um, I do yeah. want to make sure. Yeah, I do want to make sure that all of the Atlas contractors that are on the webinar know that we think this is so important that you can use Atlas Box to pay for your memberships in any of these organizations or for your membership in the NRCA or your membership or your certifications through the NRCA. We think this is that important that uh, if you have your pro portal and you have access to that, this is an application that you can use for those funds. Yep. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's a, a very important to make sure that you're tied in. And so if there's, you know, uh, an association that you're listening and you definitely want to get involved, go ahead and sign up and then talk, call, talk to your Atlas rep so that they can walk you through how easy it is. It's a simple step. You just up, uh, upload your receipt from your membership and we will credit it towards your Atlas books. So um, very simple process and for sure. I know, Steph, that a lot of you all on the panel already um, talked about your events, that you have a lot of events posted on your websites, but if there's anything that you wanted to highlight of upcoming events in the next three months that the contractors should be aware of, feel free to pop um, to pop in and, and let us know what's what's coming with you all now. We don't know. <laughs> go ahead. No, go, go right ahead. <laughs> we have no idea. The schedule is like kind of up in the air for us. We we have lots of events that were planned. They've been postponed and. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the, the, we've been posting the websites um, 
throughout the webinar so that our listeners can definitely jump on the website and get engaged to find out what is happening when those virtual events are coming up. Like Stephanie said, I know all of you are definitely doing virtual events um, right now. Were you going to say something else? The only thing I was going to say is for the organizations that have summer conventions, which most of them do, um, all of the summer conventions have had to be canceled for this year. Mm -hmm. um, there are other very traditional events. We all have them, whether they're golf tournaments or skeet shooting events or fishing tournaments. A lot of those have been delayed, not mm -hmm. canceled, but delayed this year. So be sure and, and touch base on the websites because I, all of those events are great turnouts. They're great fundraising for the organization, but they're also one of the best times you're going to have this year. So you should go for play sure. golf. You should go shoot ski. You should go catch a fish. Good for everybody. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, we we once again, we just want to thank each one of you all for joining us on today's um, panel on what the associations are doing, what the market is seeing in various um, states. And like Steph said, you know, you guys represent a vast majority of um, our our area. And so we're so glad that you all were able to take time out today to be with us. Yes, thank you. Tremendously. Thank you. Appreciate you having us you for the invite. Absolutely. Yeah, all right, guys. Um, I think all of the questions we've been able to answer through the chat um, that have come in, but we appreciate all of our Asphalt Life community and Atlas co contractors who have joined today. And on behalf of all of us, thank you all again. And um, we will see you next week on the webinar. Bye, guys. Right. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.